Welcome back to Switch Direct with What is Mana Spark? Well, that's what we're here to answer. We'll be doing a deep dive into the core mechanics, the controls, graphics, story, value, and give it a final score. So stick around to see what is Mana Spark. Mana Spark is a top down action RPG. The core gameplay can be broken down to two major sections. First is the town section. This is your home base where you'll be recruiting new townsfolk buying upgrades, and selecting your characters. The upgrades include the blacksmith, the chef, the bestiary, and the recruiter. You'll be able to use your main currency of mana runes, which you get from dungeons here. The recruiter will take two at a time to add the other townspeople for upgrades. The blacksmith, your first person to offer additional upgrades, will give you abilities to unlock, such as a bear trap or a turret. Once you have first unlocked them by acquiring them in dungeons, at least once, purchasing them here will make it so you can get them from the beginning of a run and also allows you to research further upgrades for them, such as increased damage or effects. The chef will allow you to unlock and select different foods that give you a permanent buff for the duration of each run for things such as increased drops or increased speed or damage. Next, the bestiary will allow you to uncover weaknesses in the different monsters you have found, making them easier to kill which will come in the form of reduced health. Character selection is available here too. You'll unlock characters during your dungeon delving and you'll see them walking around. Just go up to them and talk to them to switch over. You'll want to prioritize unlocking everyone, then getting and upgrading your favorite ability. Next, get a good food. And lastly, as you run out of other things to upgrade, go for all the weaknesses. There is also an altar that will show your buff that you selected during an altar event during dungeons if you were able to beat it. It requires you to go down to one or half a health point and beat three waves of monsters. Then you can select one of your current buffs as a permanent buff until you choose another one. The rest of the game you'll be spending in procedurally generated dungeons. This starts as a force then moves to actual dungeons. Each level will have several rooms, a final room for the exit and a lever to unlock the last room. In these rooms, you'll find many a monster, which you'll need to clear out to progress through the rooms, as well as they'll give you gold and mana runes. The mana runes we already discussed, their purpose in town. The gold is used in intermission rooms. They call peculiar rooms. In those intermission rooms, you'll be able to gamble for some new passives or buy new abilities with the gold you got, as well as save your temporary progress to quit for a time or continue, making it to one of these rooms will also save your mana runes to the town, so you'll need to make it to these in order to keep and collect those. The combat is primarily bow based, with dodging and an ability that you can select that has a cooldown. Many enemies will have weak points and invulnerable areas, so you have to time your shots while dodging theirs. This combat is a decent medium pace with decent telegraphs for attacks that as long as you keep on your toes and pay attention, you'll be able to dodge and overcome. This slower pace wasn't necessarily easier, but it did make gameplay feel more deliberate, which we appreciated. Sometimes, the overly fast gameplay of some games will have you just mashing a button mindlessly, where this one has you thinking about what you'll be doing, looking at visual cues, and reacting accordingly. The core mechanics get a 9 out of 10. This is a solid foundation to build a game on. A loop that has you bouncing between diving deeper into a dungeon, and a break at town to spend your points to get stronger so you can go again. While solid, there's nothing particularly new or exciting about this, so it gets a minor hit for lack of creativity, but keeps a high score for good execution. The controls have you moving with the left joystick, aiming your bow with the right joystick, a button for dodging, firing, and using your ability. These simple controls give you all you need to beat these dungeons. They're responsive and tight, while you will die often, you won't find the controls to be at fault, as everything feels like you made the move well or otherwise. Controls get 10 out of 10. Mana Sparks graphics are old school pixel graphics. They are basic, but they look nice and are fluid and give you the information you need to play the game well, while being entertaining to look at. Serviceable. But not brilliant, the graphics don't offer many complaints, nor any wow moments. They get a 7 out of 10. The story for Mana Spark is rather sparse, just having you found alone, rebuilding a town, and fighting monsters. There isn't much to talk about here, as this is not a focus of the game. It suffices enough to give you a basis for what you're doing, 
but will not be a driving force for you moving forward. Story gets a 5 out of 10. Mana Spark, depending on how good you are, will give you 10 to 15 hours of gameplay as a single player only title, the majority of which is entertaining and fun and doesn't become tiring or grindy. It's also on sale often, so if you can get it on one of its deep sales of 90% off, then it's a 10 out of 10 for value. Since it's often on sale, we'll stick with that for the value score, though if you haven't gotten it already, be sure to get it while it's on sale and not at full price. Menaspark offers an entertaining and challenging crawl through dungeons, with solid core gameplay and a satisfying gameplay loop that will have you wanting to keep coming back until you've beaten it at all. Menaspark gets a final Switch Direct score of 8 out of 10. Let us know what you thought of Menaspark in the comments. What is your favorite roguelike on Switch? If you like this content and would like to see more like it, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, and we'll catch you later.